following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville host Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. <laughs> Use our promo code SPORTSOCRACY at manscaped.com today. Again, save yourself 20% off uh, and get free worldwide shipping. Promo code SPORTSOCRACY at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. The Arizona Cardinals, Jeremy's best team in the NFC from 2020. Yeah, they went 8-8 eight and eight again. Uh, and I tried to tell you that was going to happen. This year, though, things are a little bit different. The Cardinals went out and they, they restocked. And they brought some veterans onto this team to help, you know, to help the young guys develop a little bit more. Um, I think they had a, a really good offseason. They did. Getting J.J. Watt. To me, huge. I did not see it's that coming. a huge coming. vet presence in the locker room. So was A.J. Gray. I did not see that coming, and they killed it with that, with that signing. The, the best-case scenario for the Arizona Cardinals, keep scoring, start stopping. <laughs> That's right. The defense needs to stand up and, because you're good, you can score with everybody in the league. But if your defense continues to give up more, you know, you know, more points, we, see, we saw it last year with this team. We saw it last year with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, it's the old adage, defense wins championships. If you want to win this division, your defense is going to have to mature. And I think it's going, I, I think this is the year. I like the way Isaiah Simmons came along at the, at, at the late stage of last year. He's going to be playing linebacker this year. They went out and, like I said, they added J.J. Watt to this team. Uh, the Chandler Jones thing, I don't, I, I don't foresee Chandler Jones going anywhere. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not they're going to train not him or what. I don't see that happening. They added Zayvon Collins in the draft, who's going to be an immediate starter in the middle of that linebacking core. Mm -hmm. I, think I like Zayvon Collins. I, it's, that, that was a very a hat on a hat to me. You already had Isaiah Simmons, and I, I like Zayvon Collins. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not real sure how all this is going to play out. I'm not sure how you how you get all these guys on the field together at the same time. You got a lot of undersized linebackers. Mm -hmm. And how? But again, I think that goes to the speed factor. Oh, it's 100 percent speed. We want to have speed on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I have one problem with Arizona that scares the shit out of me. Okay, I'm what's afraid that? teams are going to run the ball down the throat. Especially in this division where you have Cam Akers, uh, Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, who's going to be more of a fucking role than people think. And I don't know why I keep having to be the one to defend this. Uh, and then San Francisco that just trots out a running back that runs for, you know, 100 yards a game. Right. That scares me a little bit. Patrick Holt said in the comments the Cardinals are finishing last in this division. I will take that bet for anything you want to bet on it. I would not uh, be touching that bet for anything because I, I can very well see a path that that happens. The Seattle Seahawks, I think you you constantly sleep on them, the ability for them to continue to win games despite the fact that they have some holes on their roster. Um, and obviously we will be covering the Seattle Seahawks in just a moment here uh, in the best worst case scenario here in the sportsocracy. But... Uh, you know, I, th I feel like the Arizona Cardinals have a chance, but it all comes down to, I mean, Kyler Murray, and we've seen him be able to get the ball out to his receivers. They just added A.J. Green. I'm not sure what that, what his role is. Who's going to be the odd man out in all of this? They just drafted Rondale Moore. They still have DeAndre Hopkins. They still have Christian Kirk. How does, how does it all fit? Or does it even matter? Are they just going to throw so much that we don't even realize that somebody's getting left out of this mix with the wide receivers? Okay, Andre, uh, first of all, well, well, welcome, Andre. Uh, I said something, that I, and I phrased it poorly, so I need to uh, explain what I was trying to say. Okay. Uh, Zayvon Collins is not undersized as a linebacker. That's not the problem. The problem is they're planning on playing him as, a, as an edge in a four-man front, and I don't love that. Isaiah Simmons is undersized for a linebacker, which is what I was trying to say, and I, I got about 70% of the thought out and then didn't get that last 30% in there. Mm -hmm. Collins is, I, and I like Collins. That's part of why I'm so high on the Cardinals is I like all these pieces. I just don't know how you're going to fit them together. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you're going to, and 
All right, let's go this way. I don't see how you're going to have Zayvon Collins as an edge guy on the opposite side of Chandler Jones with Isaiah Simmons in the middle and not the greatest D-line outside of J.J. Watt. Mm -hmm. I just feel like teams are going to be able to pick on you running the ball. That's my fear. Probably should have said that in the worst case scenario, <laughs> not in the best case, but... Okay, well, the depth... I said something wrong and had to correct it. The so. depth chart that I'm looking at has Collins and Simmons in the middle. Which makes of a three, zero four. sense to me. Of all the ways to use him, that's the way that makes the least sense mm -hmm. to me. I liked him as a 4-3 Will. I liked him as a 4-3 uh, as a four three Mike. Mm -hmm. I liked him as a 3-4 outside linebacker. I don't understand the... Because they're already talking about moving Jordan Hicks. And I like Jordan Hicks. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. I don't think that's the best use of his talents. After I watched tape on him, and I watched, I watched a lot because I like him a lot. I just don't get it. What, you want to give him more range of motion coming I want, from the I want outside? Him I want him coming off the edge a lot. And I don't really want it to be with his hand in the dirt, which yeah. doesn't make any fucking sense to me. But I've heard that coming out of Arizona is that they plan on him playing all over the place. Okay. He's going to be a position. This Stop doing that. <laughs> Stop doing that. It's the Obi Melifonwu rule. I had to say this to somebody on, on Twitter the other day. Mm -hmm. Obi Melifonwu is one of the most athletic guys I've ever seen in my life. The reason that he has played for 19 teams in, what, eight years? Yeah. Is because nobody ever plays him in one position. Let a guy... It's really hard to come into this league as a rookie. And, and maybe it's because I'm the draft guy that I'm so sensitive to this. Mm -hmm. Pick a spot and let them learn it. If two or three years down the line you want to start moving them around, that's all well and good. I don't like it. Zayvon Collins was very multiple at Tulsa. That's playing a lot of the Houston Cougars, Memphis Tigers, and Central Florida Golden Knights. Mm -hmm. It's not the same level of competition. So now you're going to ask this guy to come in and be multiple again and be jack of all trades and master of none. It doesn't make any sense to me. Sorry, when I say something wrong and somebody calls me on it, I have to explain. <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate you calling me on it because if we, right. we put these out individually, and trust me, teams don't let that shit go. Fans of teams do not let it go when you say some dumb shit. No. This is a team that I feel like they are going to be able to get after the quarterback. I'm, I, I'm not uh, scared about their secondary. I get that nothing really pops I off like the, the screen secondary. at you, other than Buda Baker. Am but, I the only one that likes the secondary? Like, and maybe I'm out to lunch on this. I mean, it's it's fine. Malcolm Butler's a legitimate one. Fact or fiction? Fact. He's a legitimate one. He's one of the 32 best corners in the NFL. Yeah, I'd say fact. I mean, it didn't go well in Tennessee last year. Robert Alford is one of the 64 best corners in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I like Byron Murphy a lot. Loved him coming out of Washington. He's your nickelback. Mm -hmm. Then you got Tay Gowan on the backside. That's your four. That's a lot of talent your secondary. I hear a lot of people bash the secondary, and I don't get it at all. If there's anything I'm going to bash, it's going to be the front seven, because I don't know how they all fit together. Mm-hmm. But if you do figure it out, uh, <laughs> ooh, buddy, watch out. Ooh, buddy, there's a lot of talent up there. I just don't know where it fits. Right. Now, the worst case, okay, so best case scenario for Arizona, they could win 12 games? At least. Might be more than that. We're talking best case scenario? Mm -hmm. Best case scenario. I would say at best they split with the Rams and the 49ers. Outside of the division, I don't love that they have to go to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I don't love that they have to go to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Green Bay's on that schedule. Yeah, but it's Indianapolis in is on that schedule. I don't care. <laughs> They're better than Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah, I would say best case scenario, it's 12 and 5. Yeah. Best case scenario, 12 and 5. Right. Worst case scenario is another 8 and 8 season. I don't really project that that's going to happen, but. Uh, well, it can't be eight and eight. Well, you know what I mean. In that in that realm of eight, you know eight, eight nine nine and eight. Yeah. Right. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that happens to the next thing we talk about. Mm -hmm. But worst case scenario, they get stuck on the cliff. Cliff Kingsbury and his air raid offense. It, you know, it, it puts up a lot of points. Sure. But is it sustainable? And is it something that uh, that that teams are going to start figuring out? Here's my problem with Arizona, and this is this kind of plays into the problems I had with the defense. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is a very good coach, and I haven't for quite some time. Mm -hmm. 
I think he's a very good offensive coordinator. I think he can be a good college coach. I don't think he's an NFL coach. I don't. He does the CEO thing fine. It's the in-game decisions. And look, I was, there was probably nobody higher in media in the world on the Cardinals than I was last year. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I routinely said I thought they were the most talented team in the NFC. I thought they were the best team in the NFC. Mm -hmm. That was my spicy hot take going into last year. Cliff Kingsbury cost them a lot of games that were winnable with just piss poor decisions. I'm afraid, afraid that could happen again. If you told me this team doesn't make the playoffs, outside of Cliff Kingsbury, name me something that could stop them. Look at the talent. Right. How are you going to stop them? Christian Kirk's your four at best. Mm -hmm. Andy Isabella's your five. How do you stop that? You get stopped at the top. Your own coach stops you, and that's what I'm right. afraid of with Arizona. Right. Or the running game. I could see the running game being a downfall. If Chase Edmonds doesn't become the, the, the reliable guy that I think he can turn into, that I think he's going to turn into, I could very well see it. You got James Conner backing him up, and his time in his, his last days in Pittsburgh didn't go very He's well. He's not good. He's so, not a good football player. Stop worrying about James Conner. Right. So Chase if, Edmonds is the guy. Right. So if this running game doesn't work, and then I could very well see where that will hamper them. But you okay. also have to account for Kyler. There, there you go. There, there, there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, people keep talking about, oh, the run game might not work with Chase Edmonds and James Conner. Okay, tell me how that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to stretch you out four and five wide a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. So they're going to thin your defense out, and they're just going to run right up the freaking middle at you. Chase Edmonds is a good running back. Why Cliff doesn't want to give him full workload, I don't know. I'll agree with you. James Conner can be the spell to him as the between-the-tackles guy. Mm -hmm. But I like Chase Edmonds a lot. I think they're going to be able to run. I think they're going to be able to throw. I think the offense is going to be phenomenal. It all comes back to the in-game decisions with a coach that I just don't believe that much in. I hope he proves me wrong, but he burned me last year, and I'm not going to fall for it again this year. Yeah. You have all the talent in the world. There is nothing to stop you from being a playoff team. I don't think you can win a Super Bowl, but I think you're one of the best teams in the NFC. And if your record does not reflect that, I think it has to come back on Cliff Kingsbury. I would agree, but I think it's going to be hard that if you go from a mediocre outcome last year to 8-8, eight and eight, and you go... Say they go eleven and six. Eleven and six is in the playoffs. So that's that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm talking say about they go ten and seven and just barely miss the playoffs. You think Cliff Kingsbury's gone? Yep. Yep, I do. I don't know. I mean, that's a yep, I do. It's a, it's a two win increase year over whoop year. Whoop fucking do. And I, I mean, you can say whoop you fucking do. You but, finished I mean, dead last easy. in the division. You have the, you have the easiest schedule in this division by a mile. You cannot miss the playoffs with what you, you, because you're all in. Mm -hmm. You got AJ Green that's 407 years old. You got JJ <laughs> Watt that's 497 years old. Right. You you did this. This wasn't to be. Oh, we're better. We're better than we were last year. Uh, if you can't do it against this schedule with this team, you're not the guy. Period. Mm -hmm. And it's enough uh, j pissing in the wind by Cliff. They don't make the playoffs. He's fired. Period. Okay. I expect them to be in the hunt for the playoffs, whether or not they'll make it. I mean, I won't be shocked one way or the other. I do expect them to be better than they were last year, but whether that translates into a playoff appearance, I think there, there are several good teams at the top of the NFC. It's going to be really hard uh, to get into the playoffs this year. I have a feeling. What's the one move that you would make to make this team better? You already mentioned you were worried about uh, you know, teams running the ball down their throats. So, interior on the defensive line. The bad thing is that the addition I would like to make to this team, there's not a guy out there that fits. Okay, what is that? Uh, I'd, like a Stevie McClendon would be the ideal for me. Mm -hmm. I would love to have a guy that's just a big ass run stopper in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a talented run stopper. Before you give me Leaky Foto, I know how big he is. I don't give a <laughs> leaky, fuck. Leaky Foto. Yeah, I don't care. I just, I, I like Watt. I think Watt's going to help, but mm -hmm. three, four, you got to have three formidable guys on that D line, and I'm not sold that they do. I was going to mention Geno Atkins. 
Geno Atkins is a guy that you can get relatively cheap. He's, you know, he is a seasoned veteran in this league. And I think that would make them very, very scary. I, I would like that move a lot. Yeah. I would. That, to, to me, that would be a formidable move mm -hmm. that would probably alleviate some of my fears. That's that's my one move that they can make. Arizona, I believe that they are, while they're not best team in the NFC good, uh, they're very close. They're very they're, good. They're very close to being in that short list of teams atop the NFC for me.